Hi, this is Mr. Cardoso, and in this video we are going to take a look at this example. Um, here it says, for each function, determine the domain, intercepts, positive negative intervals, and increasing and decreasing intervals. Use the information to sketch the graph of the function. Okay, so we recognize that this is in fact a reciprocal function. This is the reciprocal of another function, let's call this one, say, g of x. And if we look at just the denominator of this, this is 4 minus x squared. So this function here is a reciprocal of this function. So we know by analyzing this function here, g of x, we can get lots of information about the original function, the reciprocal function over here. So first of all, let's get an idea of this graph. We can easily graph this. We know that it's a parabola. So let me just create a quick sketch of this graph. There's my x, y axis. So now I know this is um, a parabola that opens downwards since it's negative here. And I shift it up 4. So let me shift that up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so there I have it and so my graph is going to be like this okay now um, the next thing to figure out is what are the intercepts of this graph over here this g of x graph so if I look at the intercepts I can actually determine them from this by setting the y equal to zero and solving so if I set this y equal to zero I get 4 minus x squared equals 0, because g of x is really y, and then I get 4 equals x squared, I take the square root of both sides, and I get x equals plus or minus 2, taking the square root of 4. So that means this is negative 2, and this is positive 2. Okay, so the intercepts of this graph will actually give me the asymptotes of the um, original graph. Okay, so the asymptotes here are going to be. So I can say, safely say that there's going to be an asymptote on the original equation. Um, let's say I want this but without the arrowhead. So there's going to be an asymptote here at negative 2, and there's going to be an asymptote at 2. Okay, so there are my asymptotes. Okay, and so therefore I can write um, x is equal to 2, and x is equal to negative 2, and these are my vertical asymptotes, or the equation of my vertical asymptotes. Okay, so so that's one piece of information that we can find out. Um, from the about the original graph from the reciprocal here so we take the uh, 4 minus x squared we find the intercepts and the intercepts of this give us the vertical asymptotes okay so um, that's great there um, in the same vein we could have set the denominator equal to zero and that gives us the vertical asymptotes as well okay so um, now what else can we get from here um, we've done the uh, intercepts Let's look at the domain. So what's the domain of this graph? Okay, so the domain of this graph is x is all real numbers. Okay, you can see the parabola, it's going to go on for in all direction in both directions um, forever. So the domain is x in r. Okay, so what's the domain of our reciprocal graph? Well, our domain is going to be all real numbers as well, um, but you have to keep in mind your vertical asymptotes. So the domain is x is all real numbers, but x cannot be equal to plus or minus 2. Okay, so we've figured out the domain and the intercepts. Now let's figure out the positive and negative intervals. What this means is where is the graph above and below the x-axis? Okay, so let's look at our graph here in blue corresponding to g of x and where is that positive? 
Okay, so that's positive from negative 2 to positive 2. You can see here, this section, it's above the x-axis. So from negative 2 to positive 2 it is positive. And where is it negative? It's negative from negative infinity to negative 2. Sorry, I should say, you know, this is negative, positive and negative. And also, it's negative from positive 2 to infinity. Okay, so this part here goes on, and this part here. So, actually, you know what, this asymptote is a little off. Let me just move it a little bit to the right. There we go, now it's right on there. So this part here, you know, um, these parts are where it's negative. Okay, so, um, now, what does that tell us about our original graph? Because really, this is the part we care about. In fact, that tells us that wherever the original graph is, uh, sorry, the reciprocal graph here is positive and negative, it will be the exact same over here. So this graph here will share the exact same positive and negative um, se segments. So this is going to be positive as well from negative 2 to positive 2 and negative in the same two sections. So negative infinity to negative 2 and also from 2 to infinity. Okay, so these sections will be the same on both graphs if we look at the, the just the denominator or the entire function, the, the intervals, the positive and negative intervals will be the same. So our graph will be down here in this section because the blue graph is down here, the black graph will also be down here and same here. And in this section we know we're dealing with this part. So you know what I'm going to do in fact is I'm just going to shade in the areas where I know the graph is not going to be. The graph, because this is down here, then the graph is not going to, there's not going to be any graph over here. Okay. There's not going to be any graph over here because if you look at the blue graph, that's also down. If you look at the blue graph, it's down here. And here the blue graph is up here, so that means there's not going to be any graph down here. So I can shade those parts in from these intervals that I've discovered so that I know when I'm drawing this graph or sketching this graph, I know not to put anything in these sketched out or shaded out areas. Okay, so let's move on. We've done this now. we've done the positive and negative intervals so let's look at the increasing and decreasing intervals okay for the uh, blue graph g of x what are the intervals of increase so let's say increase intervals of increase it's increasing from negative infinity to zero you can see if you draw a little bicycle on it it's going up from left to right so it's increasing from negative infinity to zero and you, I just drew my bracket the wrong way. That should be a non-inclusive bracket. And where is it decreasing? It's decreasing from 0 to infinity. So from 0 to infinity, it's decreasing. Now, whereas the positive and negative intervals are exactly the same for our graph of interest, in this case, um, it's the opposite. So here, this is going to be an interval of decrease. Where this was an interval of increase, here we're going to have an interval of decrease. So it's going to be the same interval, but I change this from increase to decrease. Okay, and this is going to be increase. So we flip um, their opposite. So this is 0 to infinity. Okay, so now we know where it's increasing and decreasing. Okay, so I've figured that out. Okay, so from this information, you can draw a sketch of our original graph here. So I know it's going to be down in this area, so let me um, draw that, and I have my asymptote here. We also know, by the way, our horizontal asymptote from this, since it's 1 over um, something with x here, um, that means that our horizontal asymptote is going to be the x-axis because the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. So we know that we have a horizontal asymptote, which is the x-axis. Okay, so that means since the graph is not going to be up here, I can safely assume that the graph will look like this. So I'll draw a little assumption of what I think the graph is going to look like. And 
Over here, I know there can't be any graph, it's red, that's what I learned from the intervals from before. So, I can draw, you know, a graph that looks like this. Now again here, I don't know necessarily that the graph is, is going up or down. Um, I can find more pieces of information, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but, to figure that out, or to confirm that, I can use my intervals of increase and decrease, which I have here. So, let's just take what I've assumed to be true, this graph here, and let's double check and make sure it's correct. If we look at the interval of decrease, it says this graph should be decreasing from negative infinity to zero. So here we have it, it's decreasing, it's decreasing, it's decreasing, all the way to our asymptote at negative two. Let's make sure it's still decreasing. It's decreasing, it's decreasing, and it's decreasing. So that's good. All the way to zero, it's decreasing. So that's how I know this graph is like this and not the other way. Okay? Because it has to be decreasing from negative infinity to zero in this section. Okay? And then it should be increasing from zero to infinity. So here, from zero, we start increasing, and here we're also increasing. So that also confirms that my sketch is correct using the intervals of increase and decrease. Now, there's one more thing that you can use to get an even more precise graph, as I mentioned before. And that is that the, this graph, the blue graph, g of x, and our original graph here in black will intersect at the points where y is equal to plus or minus 1. So if I set y to negative 1 in, say, this function, that means that the x value that I find should be the same in both because those graphs intersect at those points. So let's do that first. Let's let y be negative 1. So I plug that in here for g of x. I, uh, sorry, positive 1. Let's do positive 1 first. And I plug that in for g of x, and I get 4 minus x squared. So here's g of x, and I replace it with positive 1. Okay, now I solve for x. So I get um, 1 plus x squared equals 4. I bring the x squared to the other side. I get x squared equals 4 minus 1, which is 3. And I get x is equal to plus or minus root 3. So what that's telling me is that when y is 1, I have two points. So I have a point here at when y is 1, I have a point of x being root 3, and I have another point of intersection between the two graphs at negative root 3 when y is 1. Okay? So this, was, this both happened when y was equal to positive 1. So that's why I have the y equal to positive 1 here. And whatever I solve for x turned out to be plus or minus 1, those gives us two points. So, when y is 1, that's, I'm looking up here, y is 1, um, that means that there's two points of intersection, and x is equal to root 3. So I go over here, and you can see my graph's probably a little bit off. Um, you know, that's probably going to have to be a little, uh, moved down, and that's the whole purpose of doing this, so we can figure out what our graph is going to entirely look like. So, you know, that's a little better, maybe. And so at, when y is 1, we're going to have an intersection here. should be over here at root 3. So these two should be intersecting here. Um, so, you know what, let's, let's just move our arbitrary 1 up here. So there's our 1. And if we move that up, okay. So now they're intersecting here. And they're going to intersect at 1 and negative root 3. Okay, so those are two intersection points. Now, if you um, plug in y is equal to negative 1 and do the same thing, you'll find the intersection points out here of these two. So you'll find an intersection point. Here's negative 1, right? So if you let y be negative 1, these two graphs will intersect um, roughly here. So obviously this is not a perfect sketch, um, but you find those intersection points before you graph it, and then you know those graphs will intersect at those two points. So that's how your graph can be a little bit more precise as well. Okay, I hope you understood this example.